Hey, everybody, we are live and we're late, but better late than never. Uh, Belle had some issues with her camera, but we're both here. So welcome in and happy Friday. Happy Everyone Friday. Say hi. Everyone say hi, hi to Belle. Um, so I have, um, Belle's relatively new to the YouTube world and she needs some subscribers. So I have all of her information down below while we're talking today. Um, feel free to go down below and follow her on Instagram, YouTube, and I have your bookstore down there too. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Oh yeah. I noticed that I was looking at my Instagram. You uh, can contact me there directly because, you know, there's no fees and I can just send you an invoice and. Usually, if you guys contact me directly with a book, you guys get a good deal with me. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hey, everybody. Hi. What's here? Welcome in. So I'm really excited to delve in with Belle. Um, I'm probably going to ask her more questions and interview her a little harder than I do most people because I really want to pick your brain about some things. Yeah, you love reading. I was like, you're probably the first person I've talked to who is an avid reader and like that just makes my heart happy. I don't even think avid is the word. 20 books a month. <laughs> <That's> gracious. <laughs> like a book a day. Um I'm 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 you know there's worse things. I could be addicted to drugs, I guess. Um so before we talk about books, tell me how you got started in reselling, how you became a reseller. So, gosh, I guys, get ready for story time, because not only am I a book person, but I, I just talk, I tell stories. So when you ask me, how did I get into reselling? It was a friend of mine, Christine, and she showed me all these cute clothes from her in her car. And I was like, oh, where'd you get these clothes? And she said, Vinted. And that was the very first app I ever got addicted to. And I was just buying clothes. And I was like, wow, this is a real thing. You can type in whatever you're looking for and then it magically appears and you don't have to go to the store so i got addicted by reselling as a shopper first and then um i actually was selling my artwork on etsy so before vinted i was an etsy seller and i was doing like crochet and um mainly crochet and then paper art like book journals and stuff like that it never ever occurred to me to resell hey Alex it never occurred to me to resell books like I would find books in the wild and get so stoked that I found like this super awesome copy of the never ending story but I never had the business mind to actually put it for sale until I got into a really bad um accident and I severed the nerves in my arm so I couldn't create art anymore, really. Um, not at the speed I was doing it. I couldn't draw, I couldn't paint, I couldn't dance. It was pretty devastating. And um, I um, started Hyla Brook Books and I just started selling some of my books with some poetry necklaces. So I would get pages from vintage poetry books and then use resin art or resin and put them in like necklaces and bracelets and I would say things like carry poetry with you wherever you go That's but so cute. yeah I really liked it but the necklaces did not take off like I thought they would you know I thought it was original I didn't see anyone else doing it um but my books were selling so I made like an aesthetic I guess you can say with Hyla Brook books um I chose books specifically for artists and authors and so maybe there would be books on Rome or books on Greece or books on architecture. I would throw those in there because if you're a writer, maybe you're writing about Paris and the Notre Dame, you know, maybe you want to get those details. I love details in a good story. So <laughs> um, that's really important to me. But yeah, then my books just started selling and I felt like I discovered a secret. I was like, no one told me you can sell books. And I was making a lot of money, but that was back when media mail was two dollars and eighty cents, and now yeah. it's like almost five dollars. Yeah, so that's how I got started, really. Just 
I just like stumbled upon it and I wish I had known way sooner that you can make money selling books online. So where do you find your books? Um, I feel like I find them everywhere. Like I feel like like today I was wa I walked to work and somebody um, was getting rid of books at the church and I just asked them if I could take them and they said sure. There's churches everywhere and they're doing like screen cleaning, but I feel like that's luck. Um, mainly I go to a hostess down the road from me. Um, I source very locally, so I don't have the opportunity to, well, maybe not the opportunity, but I don't have the same things that other people have to go out um, to source like three hours away or one hour away. I walk everywhere I go and um, the hospice is like eight minutes away and everyone there is like really, really sweet to me. And I, even though the prices change, girl, this was so cool. So I went there yesterday. Um, it's like retail therapy. I don't need more books, guys. I really don't need more inventory. And um, I was like, I'm going to buy some books. And she goes, come here, come here. And she gave me a big box of books for just a dollar. I wasn't allowed to look at them, you know, they were just, they were getting rid of them. Most of them were romance books, but I could still lock those up and sell them if I wanted to. Or them. Yeah. It was still really nice though. It's nice that they're thinking of me. Like maybe it's, yeah. not, a, it's not a whole bunch, but it's sweet that they're like, oh, a little girl who likes to get books. She's here again. <laughs> Ask her if she'll take these. <laughs> so remind me where you live. I live in East Texas. So, um, like really close to Longview and then like right by Shreveport, Louisiana. Like it's like an hour. Well, away. I know where Shreveport is because that's in the True Blood books. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> that's in, well, the, they're the Sookie Stackhouse Cozy Mysteries and then they made the show called True Blood. Um, oh, yeah. By the way, if you guys like to read, I recommend those. Those are my favorite books of all time ever. My favorite series. Yeah. Um, so I do know where Shreveport is. Um, <laughs> so do you live like in a city? Or? Yeah, I live in a really small town. It's very conservative, um, deep in the like Bible Belt area. Mm -hmm. um, everyone here is super sweet. I love like, literally, I came to Texas and I thought I was just going to visit and I got stuck here. <laughs> like, oh, um, I guess I asked because you say you walk everywhere so that either means you live in a small town where there's like four streets and a stoplight <laughs> yeah, no, or you live in really a big cool. city um, I wish I lived in a big city I was thinking about this um, really recently how I want to move back to Florida that's where I'm really from and if I lived in like Gainesville I'm, I'm sure there's lots of stuff there. I remember just loving all the thrift stores. I'm not sure what it would be now, but my friends have told me how much that place has grown. Are you into reading books or just some of them? I love reading. So I'm, I have to be really careful not to read some of the books that I plan to sell because I get connections with them. And <laughs> like, I'll feel like I have copies of books that are really important to me. Like I have a copy of the book thief that I've literally taken with me everywhere I go, everywhere I've moved. It's autographed. Um, it, it shows the where that I've gone through. It feels mm -hmm. like the, I have a copy of the illustrated man by Ray Bradbury that was given to me by my English teacher back in like 10th grade. That book has like spaghetti sauce on it. I need to throw it away. <laughs> but it's, yeah. not going so, it's funny that you say that I have a copy of the animal farm. Um, and I had to read it, I think it was my junior year, but I had the same English teacher. We did this weird thing in my high school and you could have the same, like it was a block. So you had like the same teachers all four years as they went up with you. And she was the best English teacher ever. Um, she really encouraged my love of reading. And so when I graduated, because I loved reading Animal Farm so much, she gave me a copy. Oh, and it's awesome. back here and I read it every year. <laughs> yeah, like I I have another YouTube channel that's kind of, what would you say? What's the word for a volcano that's dormant? Yeah, it hasn't taken off or anything. That 
YouTube channel is like a doormat. I posted the last thing, like a video 12 months ago, like a year ago, but it's my book channel. And that's where I was trying to start sharing things like things I like to read. And one of the videos I want to do is books I have reread over and over. Do I remember I'm sharing her story? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So oh, gosh. I love Shakespeare. Y'all, I have been on a Shakespeare kick for weeks kind of obsessed I don't know if it's like a ADD thing like I'm like what do they call hyper fixation you hear that word yeah well I'm I'm actually diagnosed OCD and I hyper fixate hyper focus okay so how do you know if I'm not just inspired or obsessed you could just be like on a kick like I'll get on a kick where all I want to read is psychological thrillers and then I'm like, if I have to read one more twist, <laughs> I'm done. So then I'll I'll read some mysteries or I'll read some more. Um, I really want to start a book channel too. Yeah, um, do it, please. <laughs> you too. I Alex. I only read three genres though. Like really, I read psychological thrillers, cozy mysteries, and horror. Um, oh, you like horror? You like to get scared? <laughs> You like nightmares? <laughs> I don't get scared. I'm desensitized. I read Carrie when I was 11. Oh, man. I think I got traumatized, not desensitized, traumatized from Pet Cemetery. I read that when I was in fifth grade. And I have like a memory of me standing in line and reading something in the beginning that freaked me out. And I dropped the book and I started screaming like a you know, little fifth grader would. And I was like, ah, oh, my God, my God. <laughs> I don't know. There's something in Stephen King's writing, though. Is there not? Like, he really gets his older it. works. Yeah. That whole shelf back there is Stephen King. He's my oh, favorite. You, you're, um, you actually will read lots of Stephen King. I, I'm, I, if I read Stephen King, I, I love his writing. I read um, On Writing, that memoir, um, which I really enjoyed. That was fun listening to. But every time I try to get into one of his books, the details get me like he's so good at like I don't know there was this one book I was trying to read it has like a raven on the front it's like one of his older works I think it's called The Stand and yeah I don't know I, I, I got I got goosebumps when I read it and I was like oh I, I just don't think I can handle I don't think I can handle horror books like mm-hmm. it gets into my head and like, I could taste the blood that this guy was talking about. Like, Stephen King was describing this character mm-hmm. biting his tongue and tasting the blood. And then I bit my tongue. And I was like, no, I can't do this. I'm immersed so, in myself. <laughs> I've read every Stephen King book except for, like, um, the last the last two that he's published. Every other single one I've read more than three or four times. You should totally I go back through his bibliography from the beginning all the way through, like, every year. And I started reading him. I'm 46. I'll be 46 in three weeks. And I started reading him when I was 11. So I've read everything like a million times. You're a fan. Um, yeah, that's why I was like, I know that's the stand. Um, but like the one that he just published last year, um, Fairy Tale, which you would probably like. It's not horror, it's okay. fantasy. He published Fairy Tale last year and Holly this year. Though those I've only read once because. I'm not back through yet. So um, real quick, just a little knowledge on Stephen King. His really early works are definitely dark horror and very um, scary. And he was on a lot of cocaine and alcohol at that time. He was? Oh, my God. He doesn't even remember writing Cujo. (laughs) No way. He was so out of it. Then he got clean. And then he went through this other phase where he was writing like a whole different way. Then he got in his accident where he almost died. And now that he's older, he's writing a whole different way. So there's like three distinct stages of Stephen King. And he doesn't always just write horror. He's got um, fairy tale and dragon eyes, which are fantasy. The Dark Tower series is fantasy. Um, And like his newer stuff, even though it's horror, it's more like there's a lot of like widows and widowers and people figuring out how to be old and live without their significant other. I think he's writing about what he's afraid of. You know what I mean? What do you think? Oh, ooh, that sounds so good. You could, you know how you just said earlier about starting a booktube channel or something? You could totally make, I would watch this. If you if you made videos like this, I would totally watch you make a breakdown of Stephen King books or Stephen, or a list of Stephen King books if you don't mind more. 
these are the books for you. That would be a good idea. I think you should try. I mean, I love booktube too. Like I, I literally sit and watch somebody read for 15 minutes. So, you know, yeah, I've always cool. thought it would be cool to start like a, um, I don't really do book hauls though. Like a lot of the YouTubers, I like to have book channels do the book hauls. They go to the used bookstores and come home with all like vintage horror and everything. Um, I read mostly on Libby, which is an app on your phone where you check them out from the library, eBooks. Oh, yeah. And then I also do Kindle Unlimited only because if I bought every book I read, I'm pretty sure we'd be homeless. So <laughs> I read and read and read and read. And then authors that are very special to me or books that are very special to me are the only ones that I'll actually buy. So I've got like the way back there, I have most of Stephen King first edition hardcover. It's really hard. I'm collecting all of them. And mm -hmm. on the bottom two are like vintage horror books that were my mother's. Over Aww. here is Dean Coons and Christopher Pike. Christopher Pike was my gateway into horror. Him and R.L. Stein. <laughs> I read oh Street. Goodness. That's so cool. You could even do like a, oh, some people do these too, the bookshelf tours. You should totally do a bookshelf tour. Yeah, I only have two though, because I minimize way down, like just so those. So what I want to do, look, we're getting way off topic off of reason. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. What I really want to do is, um, I saw these crafts that people make. They print out these little tiny pictures of the book cover. And then they post them on those foam boards and make mini books. Oh, and yeah. Then they buy the dollhouse bookshelves. And so what I want to do is get a um, haunted house dollhouse and make it like one big library and put in like tons of the my favorite mini books. That would be so cute. I almost bought like I went, I went to Family Dollar the other day and they had these like five dollar princess castles. And I was thinking, hey, Chris. I was thinking it would be so cool to take that princess castle and turn it and like paint it and turn it into a haunted castle, you know, like just for fun. But that sounds super cool. The mini like bookshelf. Oh, I I would love that. Like in my bookshelf, I have a little area that is I'm trying to grow into like a little fairy little area where there's mm -hmm. fairies and a lot of Alice Hoffman. She's my favorite writer. I like a lot of historical fiction, historical drama. Actually, really, what I've been reading is a lot of drama. Like, I really have been reading Shakespeare. I don't know why I'm obsessed with Hamlet. Um, right now, I'm kind of, like, I can't stop reading Hamlet. I couldn't stop reading Carl Sandburg. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, like, trying to practice theater, but I'm really shy. Like, we have a theater here in town, and they just had the auditions and I told myself I was going to go. I was practicing and then I chickened out again and I was like, and then my friend is in there and I was like, good for you. And she's like, I thought she were coming with me. And I was like, chicken out. I don't know. <laughs> she actually like went to school for theater. I didn't, it's literally something I kind of like stumbled upon in my late twenties. Like I'm 31 and I'm still discovering like today I was wearing a lot of streetwear, but yesterday I was dressed like a deer. I had like a deer outfit and I had my makeup looking like a deer. Um, my friend said I look like an e-girl. And then today I wanted to look like I was comfy. <laughs> so I had a bunch of Nike and New Balance shoes and like a New York hoodie. And I just looked like I was off a music video for a hip hop video or something. So it's totally opposite. And yeah, I was just thinking, like when I was younger, I would have tried so hard to stay in a box or something. But now I just want to like every day express myself in a certain way. Remember, I think I told you this, but my bike got stolen. So yeah, you did. I, yeah. So I think today the reason why I dressed up in a lot of name brands was almost like a subconscious way of saying like, yeah, my things got stolen, but here I am. I'm still dressed in nice clothes, even though I didn't buy them. <laughs> I thrifted them. <laughs> yes, of course you did. I got this for 99 cents. <laughs> yeah, this is Shein. Someone gave it to me for free. <laughs> Someone found this for me. Um, We went thrifting at one of the reseller events I went to, and they're like, Star, it's Star Wars. I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> um, So what do you do for work other than reselling? 
for for other like hobbies um i babysit so that's something else i do i don't have kids but i watch my friends kids and i'm a custodian so i'm trying to like work my way up into the school and i honestly thought that this year i was going to do the bus program because they'll they'll help you get your cb or what is it called your cbt or something yeah cbt no that's the zombie people (laughs) yeah i I was like wait what am i trying to say but yeah you know what i'm trying to say is your truck license yeah and drivers here make like 22 dollars an hour and they're it's very flat they don't have to go through hills or mountains crazily it's like it's a pretty general area and then like if you have to go to dallas or houston or something it's pretty much a straight route on the highway and a lot of bus drivers were telling me like it's actually not a bad job and it's a good entry level position if you're trying to get a job into the school system so that's kind of like what i'm looking at and then i'm also looking at substituting but the substitutes in our district like they really require bilinguals we have a very um large number of hispanic students so like my friend and me we both went and applied and she got it like um and they literally told her it's because she spoke spanish like they need they need spanish speakers that mm-hmm. so i was really bummed because i had i had college experience so i was really confused and i was like why do you think like, I'm happy for you, but why do you think I didn't get the job either? I thought we were both going to go be substitutes, but <laughs> that didn't happen. So, and now I'm trying to, like, I am trying to teach myself Spanish, but I'm not diligent, okay? Like, I'll probably do, like, three lessons, and then I'll stop, so. But if anyone has, like, recently booked questions, you can totally put them in the chat. I can rant forever and ramble. Yep, I'm just letting you, you, letting you talk, because this is pretty interesting. <laughs> I've never had a bookseller on this channel. So um, this is something that's really new for my viewers. They get to hear me talk about reading all the time. And, um, but I don't resell any books I have that I don't want. They're all right here. I do. Have you ever heard of a paperback swap? A paperback swap? Paperbackswap.com. Oh, no, I haven't heard that. Oh, so I have a bunch of these. Um, when I find them really cheap, like 10 cents, I'll just pick up a box of books and then paperbackswap.com, you, um, list them by their IBN number. And when someone picks your book, you send it to them for free. So you have to pay for the media mail to send it to them, but then you get a credit and you get to pick any book you want for free to get sent to you. And I can switch this in for a first edition hardcover, Stephen King. Dude, that is so awesome. Paperbackswap.com. I'm going to like do that with my death pile. Like I was starting a series on my YouTube to like clear up un- inventory that is just junk, you know, like maybe not junk, but I just feel like in the reselling community, when I came in here, like I just started YouTube, I just started eBay. Um, I would also want to like tell your viewers or anybody else like, I don't make a living selling books. I don't want anyone to like think, oh, I can sell books and and earn a living. Not through, not from my means. Um, there are other sellers on the platform that I follow, like Beard King Picker. He's mm-hmm. an Amazon seller. Um, I don't do Amazon. I don't know how to do Amazon. Um, it's a very like, I think, I think there's too many risks when it comes to Amazon as a beginner. Um, but I have there's too many risks for people who've been doing it for years. It's yeah, my, I just, Keith, yeah, Keith sells some of our stuff on there, but I want no parts of it. I have friends that are veteran 20 year sellers and get burned every week for thousands of dollars. Like, it's just not, yeah, yes, I'm I, thinking negatively about Amazon. Wait, oh, actually, Alex, I think I don't know if he ever got his Amazon. I, I don't know, but the last video, if you check out his channel um amazon like deactivated his account or something stupid like that i don't know if he reinstated it or not but that was actually a good example it was just so dumb um i do sell other things so i just started diving into like other media mail like records Mm -hmm. um and dvds i sell dvds for the cat rescue and um clothes but 
when it comes to clothes, I didn't know anything about like brand names and I would just choose clothes based on style. So maybe I would find a bunch of cute things that made me think, oh, a hobbit would wear this. Hey, Coco. Um, and, or maybe a, a fairy princess might wear something like this, you know, things like that, um, that had that alternative kind of feel for it. So yeah, yeah. one of my clothes in my closet were very like alternative, um, style clothes. And now that I started eBay, now I'm starting to learn about like brands like Patagonia and, um, Old Navy has been selling for me and I learned that from you. <laughs> That's one of my, that's one of my trifectas. Yeah. I, my I only I only is Nap, Old Navy, and, and um, American Eagle. Yeah. But I think I, it's because, they're selling for me and I get them for free. So it's free money for me. What, Which what's your inventory question? system for your books? Good question. Um, so my inventory system is an alpha numerical system and it goes like, from A to Z, I think it's what everyone does basically. So like I have box A1, A2, A3, A4. Um, and then that goes all the way to E right now. And then I also have two shelves. One is dedicated to unlisted inventory that needs to go up within 30 days. So it gives me like this visual of things that I can already pick and that I'm excited to list. And then um, I have a just listed section. So that way I can keep track of the books that um, fly off the shelf. But if there's books in the just listed section that have been there for 90 days, then I move them into one of those alpha numerical boxes. And this helps me like figure out what books have been in my store for over a year. Um, so I've had like, literally I had a book last week so things a week ago that I've had in my shop for two years and I was like why are you here get out my <laughs> book <laughs> so I mean, do like, you sell like, anywhere other than your your um, online bookstore oh yeah I actually just started selling at the coffee shop down here it was super unexpected okay but the lady um <laughs> this is funny another funny story but we bumped into each other at the thrift store and I picked out some books and we started talking about them and I gave her one of the books I was like this book belongs to you so I gave it to her and then she found me like a couple weeks later and was like I need your books I need you to give me books for my shop <laughs> and I was like oh you want me to like commission you want to do like a commission so we worked that out and now the um it's like a burger stand slash coffee place so there's a coffee soft store that's a separate business and then there's the burger place and at the burger place i have eclectic books there so books books on herbology um honey um cooking books um i even have a book up there on paganism that's the kind of stuff that they he was asking for and i was like i got you i got you yeah um yeah he wants that so we don't have anything like that in this town those are like like if people say i'm a hippie maybe at heart i am a little hippie at heart um so that's kind of like what i was thinking of those like hippie books um and then at the coffee store i was able to give them some of my antiquarian books and they look absolutely stunning on display in their shop and they told me, you know, hey, if I can keep it up and bring them more. And I was like, gosh, it's really hard to source antique books. Like, mm -hmm. I'll be lucky. Everybody keeps I'm saying burger and books over here. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, I'd go. A burger is my favorite thing to eat. And I love to read. Um, yeah. I actually go once a month. I go on a date with myself without Keith. I go somewhere to eat by myself with a book. Oh, that not that special? You know what I did this morning to help me feel better? about my bike was I went to the coffee store, I got me a, a mocha cappuccino, a lemon square, and I sat down with a book, just a poetry. Like when I'm really stressed, actually, if if anybody had to know, like I feel like the only thing I'm reading right now, like I said, is Shakespeare and poetry. I feel like I don't have the capacity to read a whole novel right now. Or like every time I open up a book, I'll be into it. 
and then I get distracted and then I just never come back or something else grabs my attention like are you watching the fallout series on Amazon you need to watch it I, yeah I do I mean my boyfriend <laughs> plays fallout and he loves fallout and he wants to watch it um here's the thing though he gets booked a lot he's like do you want to watch a movie no I'm reading you want to watch the show? <laughs> Not interested. I'm reading. <laughs> Go play a video game. Like it usually works out really well because he's a gamer and I'm a reader. So our evening out free time, he games and I read. Um, we do watch one. We we make time every night after dinner. We watch one show together. And right now, we're such dorks. Okay, so we're on like our fourth time through Doctor Who, but this time we're doing the Ubers. So we found a lists online and you watch so many Tortoids and so many Doctor Who's and so many Sarah Jane. And if you know what I'm talking about, you can be my new best friend, but if you don't, that's okay too. Um, so yeah, I mean, and we still haven't finished Loki. Like we're just, he always gets books. Like do you, he did get me to watch a really weird movie. That's not even in my wheelhouse the other night. Um, ride along. Cause he goes, do you want to watch a movie? And I was like, no, I'm reading, and he's like, Kevin Hart's in it, and I'm like, oh, I'm interested. Right. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> Kevin Hart's funny, but yeah, um, oh my god, I cry every single time. Scott, I cry every time. And Donna. Donna makes me cry, too. Um, But, yeah, we do need to watch Fallout. He's kind of hesitant. If you say it's good, I'll let you know you said that, because um, Halo was awful. Yeah. Oh, Halo. I'm not even going to watch that. I've, I've, I refuse. Yeah. I love Fallout. Fallout is a, a pretty meaningful game. Fallout New Vegas actually was a game that got me into writing fan fiction. I never, ever in my mind thought I would write fan fiction. And then as soon as I started playing Fallout New Vegas and created this character, I just had all these stories in my head that I wanted to do and I just started writing them out and there's like a whole place that you can put your fan fiction for Fallout and that was watching the show was really cool I didn't like the first two episodes and I almost gave up I was like this is garbage I don't like this <laughs> but then after the third uh, episode I was like never mind this is really good I'm sorry I was so hard on this show <laughs> it's fun to watch and the actor, um, what's his name? Walter Goggins? Goggins? Mm -hmm. He's actually a really good actor. Like, I was impressed. He's a ghoul. He's scary. Oh, he's so scary. I'm being I called to the carpet here. <laughs> no, I Did haven't you? yet. And I know I need to. Oh, wait. You mean One Punch or One Piece? Wait, are those two one different? Piece. One Punch is just different than One Piece, right? One Piece. Robert's been telling me to watch it for like years now, and I'm like, I'm, I'm busy reading. Sorry. One um, Piece has like a thousand episodes, so don't it? Yeah, I mean, maybe someday, but um, can we go back to books? So I like mm -hmm. TV. No, I don't really like TV. I'm lying to you. I meant to say <laughs> I like movies. I like movies. Um, and I like certain TV shows and I like true crime and I like reading. I'm a pretty well-rounded nerd. I like Doctor Who and Star Wars and Star Trek. Um, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit. The geek runs deep. Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry I'm a well-rounded nerd. <laughs> okay. We're going to go back to books because I think I saw a comment from Beard King or Alex about talking about books. But speaking of books and games, I actually bought the Harry Potter game yesterday or the other day. It was on sale for $30. Uh, it's, it's cool. It's just nostalgic. Oh, it's really nostalgic. But I thought it was going to be more like an RPG game. And I spent the, like, it forces you to do, like, two hours of a tutorial, it feels like. It's really, like, a new experience. Ugh. Well, we got it last year when it dropped, when it first came out. Did you get um, far? Like, let me, better? let me, um, I finished, we both beat it. Um, let me give you some, um, I'm going to share my screen just to show you something real quick before I say my next thing. So you understand what I'm saying. Okay. So I am such a nerd. I make these every month and keep track of the books that I read. Right. So I was going through, and for last year, I always pick 
my favorite each month and then I do a bracket so I can come out with my favorite for the year. And when I was doing that, I'm like, why didn't you read any books in April? Why? Is, what, what is going on? I did not read zero books last April. That was when Harry Potter came out. Oh. And so we must have been spinning that. And it's, a, you know, it's not a two player. Like when Baldur's Gate came out, we could play Baldur's yeah. Gate together. But we were playing Harry Potter. And I guess I didn't, I went a whole month without reading because I was so busy playing Harry Potter. Maybe, I guess I'm just like, I... <laughs> I got really upset when the troll came out of nowhere and I couldn't use my Leviosa spell or my, all those cool spells. It was like forcing me to do a, a combat roll. I'm talking about the very beginning. I've only played two hours of it. And I'm in Ravenclaw, so I'm really happy about that. So I was like, okay. I thought it was going to be a Hufflepuff, but I'm in Ravenclaw. <laughs> I know I'm a nerd. Listen. <laughs> when it comes to books, there's more than one hobby, okay? There's the actual reading of the books as a hobby. Creating a TB, to be read list or your TBR is a hobby. Yep. I have a never ending one. <laughs> um, writing the books down or creating graphics like I do of all the books that you read is a whole separate hobby. Going to the bookstore to sniff books is a whole fourth hobby. How do you mention that? Thank you. Thank you. I feel seen. <laughs> I oh. like to just. <laughs> 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 book people we are we are a league of our own <laughs> we are definitely there's something about the smell of books it really is and some people don't notice but like there are some paperback books that smell so good i bet well it's got that good paper book smell i'll even put that in my description i'll be like <laughs> in my books i'll be like it's got that good paper book smell. it smells it smells like the library <laughs> of your childhood youth <laughs> Uh, or have you ever like smelled a book and then it's like a horrible smell like oh I regret that instantly that's happened before instant regret um, I don't think I've ever smelled a book I didn't like but I did go to this used bookstore once in Florida and this he took me back to the vintage horror and he was pulling a book off the shelf and about 50 silver fish you know what those are yeah uh, the bugs they all came oh. out of the shelf he's like oh they just lived in the paper it's fine i'm like yeah i won't be buying any books from you no yeah no actually that's a funny um thing because on my last video i did mention how i don't sell books on foxing and i actually got a message on my instagram saying you know if i could do if i can explain why because i have sold books on foxing I, I I just I try not to only because of quality really. If if I'm selling a book with Foxy, I have to worry about that. But if I don't sell a book with Foxy, that's why I don't really have to worry about that um, kind of hazard or whatever. Um, and like major big book collectors, they don't really like that. And there's a bunch of terms that I totally forgot to mention. And I was just oh, I gotta about check my voicemail because it's his grandparents, so I have to make sure that everybody's okay. So you explain oh, your terms. I'm going to mute myself and listen to this. It's okay. Hey, everybody. We're going to get start a little moment here. And you guys are just going to sit with me. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know if everybody, like, even understands what ASMR is. So, but, yeah, I do listen to ASMR. Go ahead and ask any questions in the chat. But what I was saying is in my last video, there were some terms that I totally kind of forgot. Like, one term. That's really important <laughs> that I literally just use is the word splayed. And when you have a book, sometimes people will display books on their shelves open, you know, like you want to see it open. And if you leave a book like that for a long time, depending on the environment, your covers will actually, instead of being straight, they'll do this. And that's called splayed covers. Mm -hmm. So I have a copy of a very rare book, but the covers are splayed. So like it affects the quality. Like, oh, I could have got $150, but it's not in mint condition. Like I have a copy of the never ending story. I thought it was a first edition German. I lied. It wasn't a German translation. No, it wasn't a German translation. Okay. It was a first edition US hardcover, um, which still goes for a little bit. But um, I um, <laughs> I didn't realize that I had left it on display for so long. Tell us about your YouTube channel. Which one? 
this one, the Valerie cells, or the mm -hmm. one I kind of mentioned in passing? Tell us about Valerie cells. Valerie cells. Valerie cells. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> no, I, I've been watching reseller YouTube content for a while. I remember watching Katie Reed's and Prison to Profit. And I found them by accident because um, somebody I knew that was close to me went to prison and I was learning about the prison system. But I was also watching reselling content like Craigslist Hunter. And then, boom, the algorithm just posted Prison to Profit on my feed. And then I found Katie Reads, and I would watch all their videos. And then I just, I think I just got burnt out from reselling content after a while and stopped reselling for a little bit. And then last year, when it, once I turned 30, I was like, oh, I don't have like any videos of myself in my 20s or really any pictures or I haven't really recorded anything. I felt too shy. Um, and I don't really want that. So I just decided I wanted to like, basically I've had a blog for Bell Resells for years and I said blogging is irrelevant now people don't read blogs anymore they want video so I need to convert my blog content to a video format and that will make it more digestible for people um, or maybe people will find my content more that's so hard when you I don't do like any video editing like I don't I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I might start doing lives so, though, because I started to notice that with lives, um, we it's less, you don't have to edit. We're not editing right now. And it's very like raw, I guess. Like people aren't expecting me to do a bunch of cool special effects or anything. So I kind of like that. I might start doing that more. Um oh my gosh. I had a question in my head and I completely spaced it out. Um, did you, when I was checking my voicemail, did you explain to the folks what proxies are for those who don't know? Yeah, um, I explained the terms that I didn't mention in my last video. So maybe we'll do another one. I've also thought about doing a video uh, about like, you know how like some people might not know what TBR means. Like I was gonna do a basic like book talk type video. Um, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to go to jail either. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people like DNR, TBR. Yeah, DNR. people don't do that. So I mm -hmm. thought about making like a quick video. Like on my Instagram, when you go to buy a book, um, sometimes I use abbreviations like VGUC. That means very good used condition. So like if you want to sell on Instagram, there's a couple of abbreviations that help. But I'm like, that sounds so boring. And I, no, I, made, I, love the video. I made a long time ago a reseller glossary video. And I basically was just like, um, NWT means this and EUC means this. And um, this was like when I first started. So 100 years ago, whenever. <laughs> and it got a lot of views because people don't know. And it still gets hits today because new people, you should do it. Shane was the person who encouraged me to make that other video, the last one with the anatomy of a book. Um, and he called it an evergreen video. And I like, I don't know a lot about YouTube. So, and you see how Shane just blew up, but that's because he's so cool and popular, you know, like, <laughs> but maybe there's more to it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, uh, an evergreen video, I think I'll try to do more of those too. But honestly, when I started YouTube, I wasn't thinking, oh, I want to make money. I want to do this. I just wanted to like have fun making videos and make memories. I wanted to be able to see like a year from now. But that was that video where I, me and my friend went bending and that's a, that was a good time. You know, like I just want to like record memories and stuff. So I'm having to like shift from that and be more professional and like, all right, let me brand. Let, let's think of this more like a product that I can. Have sell. you watched any of my videos? <laughs> I don't <laughs> edit. I don't <laughs> care. That's why I really like those types of videos. I like when people post things that don't um, like. It's just yourself. It's just your authentic self. There's nothing. Yeah. Nothing. I else don't. Going on. I'm not here to make movies. I'm here to talk. 
Yeah, I love talking too. I'm here to talk and teach people. That's what I'm here for. Um, (laughs) So you guys go, if you haven't followed Belle already, her YouTube is in the description box. I'll say it again. Um, Her anatomy book is there. And the evergreen videos are good though, because here, I'll tell you a secret. My most viewed video at all times, if you look up of all time, of last week, of last month, of today. It is me showing people how to take one of these cords. Hold on. (laughs) It shows, it literally shows me plugging one of these into my phone and then into my computer and how to take the pictures off my computer, off my phone to put them on my computer. I need to watch that. So (laughs) when I made that video, Keith actually said to me, you've got to be kidding me. You are not making that. Everyone knows how to do that. I said, I think, I don't think they do. And that is my ever, that's my, like, that's all, half my YouTube money every month is that video I made in 2018. Oh, yeah. I was going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, like, I totally stole your thumbnails. Did you not notice? <laughs> I love your thumbnails so much. No. When you look at my book haul videos, they look like your, basically, you know how you have like a square and then the text block and it's like purple. So mine's is gray. It says thrift haul. And then there's a picture and I was like, yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I'm always, (laughs) I just do the book hauls or I just do it for hauls. So like, I need to work on my thumbnails so bad. Like, Yeah, I've been told for eight years from other YouTubers I need to work on my thumbnails, and I'm like, not a priority. Yeah, YouTube like, isn't a priority for me. Content creation, social media, YouTube, not a priority. It's just fun. I, I don't know. I feel like everybody gets lost in the sauce trying to make all these numbers and stuff. But just, y'all have to just remember to have fun. You know, we're yeah. here for a short well, time. Not my priority is reselling, so... Um, you're doing this full time, right? Like, I that's why I watch you mostly, but you're a full time reseller too. So, yeah, both me and my my partner. How's it uh, like being a partner that is supportive? Like, he does this with you? Well, Keith and I were best friends for 10 years before we were together. Um, so I think that helps a lot. Like, in all ways, like not just for business, but for like everything, because we're still best friends. Um, we like each other. <laughs> we legitimately like each other. Like we, you know, um, we work on different floors though, because we are here all day, every day together. So we work on different floors. We take a lunch break together. We stop for dinner together and we go for a walk every day together. Do you have like any recommendations for people to like get on a certain routine? Because I feel like that's my biggest, like I feel like I would kill it selling books if I could just stay disciplined to like a schedule, just like clocking in and clocking out at work. I feel like I just can't stay committed. Like almost like when you try to tell yourself to get on the treadmill every day, it's just discipline. I think reselling is a lot of work. (laughs) Oh my gosh, it does have 105. I didn't know it was up to that much. <laughs> that Dang. video I was talking about, 105,000 views. Dang. That's I don't even think my Beanie Baby has that much. Now I got to know. Um, I just doing made... something really weird, just by the way. I don't know why. I dropped it, so now it's being weird. I don't know why. You can still see me, right? I can see you. I can weird. still see you. Um, this, yeah, my you. very first Beanie Baby video only has 31,000, so. Is that, I um, think I've seen one, um, because I've gone to your channel and clicked on oldest videos first. I love doing that. I lo- I will literally go to your channel and watch your oldest videos. <laughs> Those are the <laughs> cringiest. They're terrible. <laughs> I know. No, no, no. I didn't mean to say that. I know, no. No, they're not terrible. It probably has no. <laughs> I just, um, like, I've actually been watching um, Rachel Strickland's older videos, and I'm trying to catch up, and Katie Reed's older videos, which is super funny, because I've already watched a couple of old, a lots of her older videos, but I feel like I can't watch her newer videos, 
until I catch up, like if I'm watching a whole season or something, like I need to binge all of these videos first and then I can be like, I'm caught up now. <laughs> um, so I make so many videos about routines and time management because that's my jam. That's like, that's my jam. I love time management. I love routines. So my biggest advice, if I had to just like sum it down real small for you right now, um, get some kind of planner, journal, notebook. It could be a spiral notebook from the Dollar Tree um, and write a schedule down and stick to it and just do it. Like you said, like on the treadmill or whatever, when you start a new habit, you know how you have to force yourself to do it for like a month and then it becomes a habit. Yeah. So it takes 30 days to create a new habit. So, you know, get a book and write down on Mondays, I want to list 10. On Tuesdays, I want to take photographs. On Wednesdays, I want to go sourcing. Whatever you want your schedule to look like. And force yourself to do it until it's natural. And so now, like, even on days when I don't feel good or I don't want to, I do. Because yes, I've yeah. been doing the same thing. I take pictures on Thursdays every Thursday for years. So I'm going to do it, right? You use a batch method, right? Like, I kind of just stumbled on this, but some resellers will do things on certain days. Like, I kind of do that, too, is I spend Tuesdays and Thursdays photographing for, like, maybe two hours, whatever I'm going to list. And then that's it. I don't do anything else for the whole day. I, I just photograph for three hours. That's, like, a part-time shift for me. And then the next day, I... I go through all those items and then I do the drafting. So I'm just sitting at my computer focusing on one task, which is just putting in the descriptions and drafting. And then I do the second or last step, which is put them all up. So like I'll basically list like a hundred books at a time, but it takes me like three to four days to build that up and then boom, a hundred. So I don't list like 20 books every day it takes me the week and then that weekend I launch a hundred new books basically is what happened but I haven't been very good at that lately because your girl has been lazy or just maybe not lazy executive dysfunction is not laziness it's misery <laughs> you're stressed out so um but that's why the routines are so important because I mean, short of having a really bad day where my back is like, you're not even going to sit in a chair without being excruciating pain. Um, and I get bad migraines too. But there's days where it's just a mild migraine or a mild backache or I'm just tired or my insomnia was bad or I just feel like a bitch that day and I don't want to work. Um, I do it anyway because it's autopilot. Um, so that's why the routines are important because like – you know, for instance, your bike gets stolen and you're stressed out. Well, you go, did you make a police report? I hope you did. Yeah. yeah. You go make your police report. You have a piece of chocolate or something to make yourself feel better. And, and then you realize it's Thursday. I still need a list and you do it anyway. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It was like, it knocked me down and I was like, no, I'm a, I'm a bit of a Christian woman here. I'm raised around a lot of Christians. I would say I'm Christ curious, but one of the things that I said to myself was, I can't let the devil win. I can't let people see me like get affected by this. I'm good. You can go ahead and take my bike, whatever. I'm good. Like it don't affect me. I'm still a very happy person. I'm very grateful for all the things I still have. Like it's okay. Like it feels really bad to have something like taken from you. And then to like think that somebody has it, like that's not yours. And I've never, I've never done anything like to hurt anybody. So you're always like, gosh, what did I do to deserve this? But yeah, that. um, I'm trying to buy Keith some comics. It's six o'clock, everybody. Check your good little blue box. Um, yeah, actually, I was just about to say, so remember how earlier I said that my phone's being weird? I missed the, my phone is like at 5%, so that's what, that's what it's doing. It's like really cracked. I've like dropped my phone, so I couldn't read it, but I guess my battery is like draining. I have 5%, so I don't want to like have us talking and then cut off. I would feel so bad. Oh, you're because at 5%, so we better wrap this up. Yeah, guys. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that my battery like. No, that's fine. Um, sorry. Go ahead and wrap it up. Um, 
Well, I'll just ask you what I usually ask everyone right before we get off. Do you have any last words of wisdom for the people? Don't be a hoarder. <laughs> That's a good one. Don't be a hoarder. Don't get help. <laughs> if you're a hoarder. It's okay. Don't feel bad if you're a hoarder. I feel like in the reselling community a lot, at least when I started, I started feeling like really guilty about all the stuff that I had that I hadn't listed. And I stopped calling it, oh, here's my buy. Stop calling it a debt pile and just call it unlisted inventory. Because you don't need to repeat that word over it in your head. Like, this is my death pile, my death pile. If you take the word pile off, you're just repeating the words, my death, my death over and over again. And I just, I believe in the power of words a lot. And it's just something you probably shouldn't be saying all the time. As a joke, it sounds raw. It sounds cool. That's my death pile, man. That, that, that's my death pile. It sounds cool. But it's probably not the best thing to keep saying over and over in your head so i call it unlisted inventory or your or your money making pile turn it's it my into, it's my just in case yeah turn it into a positive i'm the kind of person that thinks a little bit too negatively sometimes so just try to be happy and also i guess the other thing too is i see so many people with youtube channels being so hard on themselves i love like everybody's channel i seriously do if y'all i'm commenting on a lot of it i'm generally meaning it i try to watch all your videos <laughs> at work because <laughs> that's all i do is i clean and then i listen to everyone's videos i just go down the list and i try to leave a comment or something so or i'll like binge the flipping hippos <laughs> oh okay um i think her phone's dying so we're gonna or turn or something um that's her last words of wisdom. Don't be a hoarder. Get your stuff listed. That's important. Follow everything down below for her bookstore, her YouTube, and her Instagram. And like I tell you guys every week, work-life balance is so super important. So this weekend, if you need to work, work, but take some time out for yourself. Do some self-care. Spend some time with your friends, your family, and most importantly, your pets. Until next time, guys. Be productive. Find that balance. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, Belle's already gone. Her phone died, but I'm pretty sure she might come back to watch the end of this. So thank you so much for coming on, Belle. And thank you, everybody, for um, watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.